My name is Valentino Cooper. I'm a staff member here at Oak Ridge National Labs. I'm in the materials theory group. So what that means is I use large parallel computers to study materials at their most basic level, at the level of atoms and electrons. What I really want to do is to be able to understand what makes these things work and how we can go about and to make them better. For example, I work on piezoelectrics. So piezoelectrics are materials that convert mechanical stress to electrical energy. So you can think of it as, you know, you have a material and if you push on that material, um, you can generate some electric current. One very popular application are sort of ultrasound machines. You basically use some sound waves that go in and they, um, you know, they react with the piezoelectric. That creates an electrical signal that you can then view on your monitor and you can see what your, uh, your baby looks like. Now, in the last, say, 10 years, what's happened is that there's been a lot of development in the sensitivity of piezoelectrics. And so now, instead of just looking at 2D ultrasound uh, images, you can actually get 3D ultrasound images. And of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of potential for even more improvement. Perhaps now we can go to something where we look, where we can, you know, do more sort of medical um, diagnoses with these materials, for, you know, um, instead of having to use things that are sort of damaging to your body like x-rays. From an energy application, there was a company that generated piezoelectric tiles, and so you can think of just laying these around and just using people's motion to generate electricity. Or you can use the, the, the reverse effect. For example, if you apply an electric field, these things change shape, and what you can do with that is you, know, you use these in things like piezoelectric fuel injectors and diesel engines, and you can really control the amount of fuel that's being delivered. Um, and that, that has significant consequences for how efficient your engine is going to be. The biggest challenge is really finding materials that don't have lead in them. Lead is in, in these materials is an extremely active component. And so if we can find another chemical em element that we can add in that would actually um, have the same sort of properties that lead has, then we would be a lot further along the way in, in finding more environmentally friendly materials. Ornl is, is really a great environment to work in. Um, from, a, from a theory perspective, you know, it has one of the largest groups of theorists in any sort of laboratory setting. And so this allows people like me to not only see how their work affects the basic science, but how this can be you know, scaled up to different length scales all the way up to um, the level of devices. Furthermore, there are there are world-class experimental scientists that are experienced in growth and characterization of these materials. And so as, as theorists, you know, you have the opportunity that you can predict something and there's also the possibility that someone will go out there and actually make these things and characterize them and, and see whether or not your, your theories are correct or not.